What a wonderful moment for me to introduce the person who brought me to Baba, the Baba lover with whom I share my life, who wakes up in the morning talking to Baba, who, when she wakes up in the night, is talking to Baba still, and who, as she goes about the house, prepares meals, does the ironing, or whatever it may be, is engaged in a continual conversation with Baba. So that when I think that other people have come to the house, I find it's just this Baba lover who is going about her day's work and talking to him. During these two or three days, you've come to know Dorothy very well. You'll know her even better after the next hour and a quarter. About half an hour ago, I made a mark against these words. They're Baba's words, of course. <coughs> <coughs> Do not give undue importance to explanations and discourses. Words that fail to give any meaning to reality. Because when one supposes that one has understood, one has not understood. One is far from understanding anything, so far as reality is concerned. Reality is beyond human understanding, for it is beyond reason. Understanding cannot help because God is beyond understanding. The moment you try to understand God, you misunderstand him. You miss him when you try to understand him. It made me a bit thoughtful. I've read those words before, often, but just to sort of come across them like that half an hour before I'm going to talk. I have to put these glasses on, I apologize. The operation on my eye two years ago, I can't take very strong light. This has been a most wonderful Sahabas for me. <clears throat> I think for all of us. We must have absorbed so much. We must feel quite full up to there and very full here. <clears throat> and you can tell from the sound of my voice that I'm beginning to get a little tired too. Does I never prepare talks? This little piece I read half an hour ago has given me the idea for what I will talk about this evening. Although I know that the actual title of the talk is Avatar, Mehe Baba, and Human Perfectibility. Once, when I was in India, a group of us were talking. Rana was there, and the question of God-realization came up. And Rana suddenly said, I'm not interested in God-realization. I never think about it. I don't know anything at all about it. 
all I am interested in is serving Baba. I thought it was very beautiful, very profound, because if anyone has a right to think a bit about God-realization, surely it is the Mandalay, which have had such heavy disciplining from their beloved master. So we will make no attempt this evening when what I mean by per human perfectibility I mean human perfectibility and not God-realization. I assume that in some far, far distant period, I may approach somewhere near it. At this stage, I shall be very grateful if I can achieve what I call human perfection. I shall feel that that is a very tremendous step forward, that it still keeps me in the human range. And of course, you all know from your reading that the next step in evolution for mankind is passing from the human to the divine. How many eons, cycles, I don't know. But I am concerned with the now, the present. And I have experienced for myself as a result of my meeting with Baba and what knowledge I have gained from him. And although he says he didn't come to teach, he has given us a wonderful body of teaching. The discourses alone could carry one through many lives. But there is God speaks and So, the perfection I want to talk about this evening is something that every one of us could, if we took the idea seriously that this is a possibility for us, and we wish for it, of course, it can be attained here and now. And I think that the thing is not to take it too seriously. Baba was always saying he didn't like discourses. And he didn't like words. But as Baba is no longer with us and has left us with this wonderful teaching, some of it we should take very seriously. And this is a criticism I am going to make of Baba lovers as a whole. There is no lack of love, there is no lack of service, and all wonderful people to be with but I find it very rare to find a Baba lover who reads the discourses, a, a small portion of it every day, or takes a discourse very seriously. The discourse on the sanctification of married life 
you have in the title alone, Baba is telling you something. He doesn't say the state of marriage. He says the sanctification. Now, it is a word, but it's an important one. The title already tells you marriage is sacred. If marriage is sacred and Baba has given a discourse on the sanctification of married life, surely we should read it and read it and read it and read it and read it. it. Baba said, that everything had to be read seven times before we could even begin to understand. But a lot of you seem to think there are the discourses, you may even have classes on the discourses, but do you take them seriously? Do you really understand? Why Baba says to you, don't worry, be happy. Is he being facetious in view of the many tragedies around us? How can one be happy when there is so much chaos in the world? But Baba is saying, don't worry, be happy. And Baba has explained to us that he lives in a state of bliss, but also at the same time takes on himself all this misery. Well, as none of us can attain to that state of bliss that Baba is in because A, he's the avatar, B, he's a perfect master. C, he's just Baba. Wonderful. But he has given us clues that will help us to support the misery, our personal misery, the difficulties around us. And at the same time, to be in an inward state of joy. And that inward state of joy can make us, now listen carefully to the words, they're not mine, they're Baba's. That state of joy can make us alive with God. It's not God realization, this is something far, far beyond us. But that inner state of joy, that inner state of confidence, which gives to the person who has it a state of what I think I would almost call a state of saturated calm a sense of tranquility and at the same time makes them very alive, very aware of everything. I will tell you a little story. There's a a community of people living in a mountain district. And one of the young lads of the village who has been driving to the nearest village further on comes rushing back in a great state of excitement. And he says, the great sage has just left the village, I don't remember its name, 
and is on the path to come here. We must all get ready to receive him. I have seen him. He is by himself. No one is with him. But he is the great sage. He is carrying a staff. And he has a cloak. And he's on his way. Let us all get ready. So all the villagers rushed into their main hall and started sweeping up and tidying and getting ready. And in about half an hour, the sage appeared, looking a little footsore and weary. But they greeted him, gave him food, gave him drink. And then they said, now, please give us a discourse. The sage passed his hands over his head and looked round at them all and said, Awareness. What's the matter with him? What, what? Little voices. Uh, please continue. Awareness. Please give us a discourse, came a voice. From... I have given you a discourse. Awareness is awareness. Learn it. Thank you for your food and your drink. Put his cloak round his shoulders and left. Now, awareness is only a word, isn't it? But it's a very important word. Aware. Aware of oneself, aware of each other. And how many of us are sufficiently open to be aware of oneself, not one's persona, not not all the acts that one puts on inevitably to meet the daily grind. How many are really aware of ourselves? What do we do when we come up against any failure in ourselves? We don't want to see it. And yet, the words of another great sage, the Delphic Oracle, know thyself. But we can't. We, we seem that we can't even do this. But Baba has given us all the means whereby we can. It all comes into his discourses. He tells you how to cope with the ego, how to meditate. He gives you the lot. How many of you take it seriously? You see, you worship Baba, and you feel intense love in that worship. But Baba has come to bring you, and because I want the correct words, all oh, this glasses business. I bring the greatest treasure which it is possible for man to receive, a treasure which includes all other treasures, one which endures forever, 
and increases when shared with others. Be ready to receive it. If I have any value as a human being, if I have any meaning, if to you I seem to have many advantages, it is because all the sufferings of my life, and of course I realize that the sufferings of my life have come from my past karma. I know nothing of past lives. I'm not interested in past lives. I know that I have enough to do coping with this one. So I don't know anything of past lives. <coughs> but if I have any value for myself and my fellow creatures, it is because I made my mind up when I met Baba and I read those words. I said as I finished, Baba, I am ready to receive the treasure. Make me worthy. And Tom has described to you that I wake up talking Baba. And <coughs> you can talk to Baba. It is true that Baba has laid down his physical body, but you can talk to him. He hasn't left us. He is precisely because he is not in the physical body. He is much nearer to us. It is much easier for him to be at one with all of us. He hasn't the impediment any longer of the physical body, which can tire and exhaust. So he is very, very close to us. So that every time you sit and read a few sentences from the discourses, and you give yourself up to what Baba is saying, you are creating a contact with him. Baba has said that if we think of him only once a day and can remember his name when we are passing over, that we will go to him. But if we think of him, by reading a few sentences of him every day until we have absorbed the meaning of what he is saying to us. We are with him and will naturally go to him when we pass over. But the aim is to have him here with us now. Baba is always telling us the God within. He comes to give us a blueprint, but he is always saying, you and I are not we, but one. He is trying to tell us all the time, I live in your hearts. Waken me up, waken me up. And you do this by giving him a little daily attention. And though your love and all your service, and let me say, I am deeply impressed with all of you, with all the work you do, with all the arrangements you have made. And I'm going to say this, although I am aware that this is going on tape. 
I am ashamed of the laziness of our British group when I see the efforts that you all make. But this is a collective thing and you're happy doing it together. But when you say good night to each other or goodbye to each other and you go to your own homes and when you get into your own bed at night you are alone with yourself. How many of you are truly happy? How many of you really experience that waking up, that joy in being alive and being able to say every morning you wake up, thank you, Bob. Do you do it? If you don't do, you can make the contact. He is waiting, he's waiting for you to make him your constant companion. So when Tom says, I'm ironing a shirt, I've got such a habit of talking with Barbara. I say, a bit tired today, Barbara. That shirt's not as good as it should be, but it's going to have to do. This is what Tom hears, you see. Come and have it. And I'm very keen on cooking. And when I'm cooking, when being a cook, one has failures as well as successes. And when it's a failure, I say, Barbara, haven't done my very best today. This is not much use. However, I'm not going to throw it away. There's too much starvation in the world. <laughs> they're, going, they're going to eat it. <laughs> but I am very serious about this because it makes me so sad to see so many of you in a state of confusion. Do you really believe that God the Father wants us to suffer poverty, wants us to suffer sickness, wants us to be deeply despairing and unhappy. This is not his plan. It is what we, we humans, have made of life. We have created the chaos that exists around us. And Baba explains in his discourse the inexorable must how all this has come about and why he has to appear from time to time to release us from the chaos we have made because our eyes are continually turned outwards and we do not give enough attention to turning them inwards. Turning them inwards, of course, means first of all, understanding yourself. And we don't like knowing ourselves. We put up tremendous resistances to anything we don't like in ourselves. I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm doing it deliberately. So in order to come to Baba, you have to begin understanding, knowing yourself. And Baba will give you experiences in order to teach you to understand yourself. This is why he says, don't worry, be happy. Perhaps 
a better example I can give you, and because it is an important one, and plays a very great part in life today, the Pope is being severely criticised over it. This is the matter of birth control. Barber tells you, mental control. You think it's difficult. Barber, we understand, we understand what you're saying to us, but this is too difficult for us. For the female to take a pill, it's much easier. But what you don't understand is that if you practice mental control, because you are in Barbara's hands, you will only have the children that you can manage. And the children that are meant for you in any case. But you see, you don't trust Barbara. You think you do. But in the very fact that you don't obey that preset he has given us, shows that you're not really trusting him. Now, I know I'm talking very seriously, and I've already watched several people walk out. But this is a perfect example. You are afraid to trust such a precept as that. It may mean too many babies, too much responsibility, it won't. Barbara will see that you are not overburdened. And it would work out if you showed the trust and followed it. This is a very extreme example. And it is the same with finances, with money. You don't ask Baba to make you rich. This would be an insult. But Baba knows we're in a physical body, that the body has to be fed, it has to be clothed, it has to be housed. <coughs> he knows that a man has to earn his living. that if he marries, he has a wife to support, and that there will be children. If you really trusted Baba, you would have faith that he would not make you a millionaire. That would burden you. But you would have all that you need he wouldn't give you the millions and millions of wants that we all have, but you would have your needs. You wouldn't have to worry. You could be happy, not worried. But the average young man leaving college, what is his? In the words of a young man I spoke to a little, I've got to make money. I've got to get it. Well, of course he's got to have money. He's got to have money to live. But you see, he's saying, I have got to. It's true that we have to work. But what did Baba do with the mandalay? didn't really give them very much rest. But when you come to understand the joy of labor, a 
And I really mean this, that when you can get to the stage that everything you do, you do for Baba, you then do it much better than if you were doing it for yourself. And this is why you can achieve so much more work. In short, it all becomes a matter not of just loving Baba, worshipping Baba, but saying, what is this treasure you have come to give us, Baba? Why do you give us these instructions? Why have you given us this seemingly severe instruction for birth control? I assure you, Baba does not ask you to do anything beyond your capacity. It is you who limit your capacity. It is you who keep yourself in the cage of wants. A young woman said to me recently, since we have come to America, I've got to be tough. I said, yes, life is a very tough thing and we have to be tough. But can I remind you of Baba's words? that love <coughs> requires two things, and one has to be strong to carry them. Love has to be as tough as steel and as soft as butter. And if you are as tough as steel, when you should be as soft as butter, and as soft as butter when you... Only God can help you. But how many stop to think of, am I being too tough or am I being too soft? You see, we're so busy enjoying, hating illusion. We don't stop to think of these, all these wonderful words that Baba has given us. We exchange them, we praise them, we say his, do we tick? I'm seriously. And this is what I mean by we can attain here and now that inner joy by taking Baba's words seriously. I am with you always. And if he is with you always, in your heart, and you are able to communicate with him, talk to him as though he is a person with you, you are never lonely. Everything you do, you do with a purpose. You're doing it for the master. So that you have a purpose in living. This is when work becomes a joy and not a harassment. Poor mother having to take her baby out. Now, having said all this, would any of you like to ask questions?
This is, this is quite true. And what words did I start with? What did I read out right at the beginning? That we must not give too much weight to words and discourses. But equally, you mustn't dismiss them. You mustn't dismiss them. It's keeping a happy balance. It's being able to put into practice. If you just only understood the words, don't worry, be happy. But because of the type I am, I have been a reader. And so it is easy for me. But it is through the reading of Barbara's words that now I have arrived at that state of what I can call a state of inner joy. And you grow, it becomes a state of awareness the whole time. <clears throat> now let me tell you another little story. A very rich man, merchant, decided that he was getting old and that he should now enjoy his wealth. He had done a great deal of traveling and he recalled that on his travels, making his money, he had come to a great city where there was a very renowned emperor. And he was too busy at the time to find out very much about the emperor, but decided that now he would go to that city and try to find out more about this famous emperor who was still living. So he set off and arrived at the city and he went to see the Grand Vizier and said, I would like to have an audience with the emperor. I, he gave his name. He said, I have done much trade with this city. Could you get me an audience? And the Grand Vizier said, I will let you know in three days. Give me your address and I will let you know. And in three days came, the emperor will see you. And the merchant, very excited, arrived at the palace and was shown into a room. And after a few moments, the emperor came in and sat down. And the emperor said how pleased he was to see the merchant. He had heard that he had done much trade with the city and the city had been considerably helped by the trade. And the emperor said, now tell me a little bit about your travels. And of course, the merchant was delighted. There he was alone with the emperor, and he talked on, and he talked on, and he talked on. And after a while, the emperor put up his hand and he said, you will forgive me. I am an emperor with a, a city on my hands with much work to do. I have to end this audience. I have enjoyed your travels. I envy you that you can move about the world and see so much. I am confined here. But before you leave, I have a feeling that there is something you would like to ask me. And the merchant said, indeed, sir, I noticed all the time I was talking, that you had a ring on your hand and that you kept taking it off and looking at it as though there was an inscription inside. And the emperor said, yes, indeed, I'm glad you noticed. And he took it off and he showed it to him. And he said to the merchant, can you read the inscription? He said, yes, sir, it says it passes. The emperor said, putting the ring back on, you see, 
when I am very, very happy, which is not very often. I'm a very burdened man. I look at my ring and I read, it passes. He says, equally, when I am very burdened and very distressed, which happens rather oftener than I like, I read, it passes. Joy, sorrow, the opposites. It passes. We know that happiness passes. We know that. The opposites have to be experienced and finally overcome. And he gives instruction in the discourses how this is to be done. And only a little bit each day. Wives, don't neglect the washing up and the cooking the dinner in order to read a discourse but snatch a few minutes when you first get up to read a little bit. And in 12 months, if you only read a couple of sentences, you would soon begin to get so interested that... Let me remind you of the famous words that Clement of Alexandria, there were two Clements, this is Clement of Alexandria, and this comes in much silence. Jesus said, what I have done, all men can do. What I am, all men can be. But you don't even have to get to that, even though Gurdjieff recommends it. Life is only real then when I am. Long before you get to a Christ-like state. And this is what I want to emphasize. I am nowhere near Christ-like. But I have got the beginnings of a daily happiness and joy in life, which gives me the ability to praise Baba all the time, to understand what he means by don't worry, be happy, to understand what he means by being alive with God. It's only a little lifting of the but it's a beginning, and it's something as Baba lovers, each one of us could have with just a little thought, a little attention. People who live up here in the clouds suffer. People who have their feet too firmly on the earth, suffer. It is when feet firmly planted on the earth and one can lift one's eyes up and down that one begins to get some detachment, some understanding and begins to expand and grow. This is why in the discourse, the life of the spirit, Baba has wonderful words. I can't read it to you tonight, it's too long and my throat is a little tired. But I recommend 
read the life of the spirit because Baba is saying that matter is essential. We have to be clothed in matter. But the primary thing is spirit. And when you live from the spirit and accept matter and accept your position in it, the inexorable must as the result of karma, and you allow yourself like a plant in the earth. A plant has to have its roots well in the earth and to receive nourishment from the wind, the sun and water. And if it is well established, then the plant can grow. This is why I'm not a Presbyterian, but the Presbyterian Shorter Catechism asks a question. What is the purpose of God? What is the purpose of man in the eyes of God? The answer is to glorify God and to beautify the earth. To beautify the earth. To make the earth the earth, the world, is the only place of manifestation. Baba says the Son of God is in every man, but has to be manifested. These are very serious words, but they are pointing to a great joy. We should all be singing Baba's praises the whole time and following what he says and what I mean by prayer is not getting down on one's knees and saying, please God, I can't pay the rent, please send me some. It's not asking for anything because it is all there. Can you repeat that to me? I didn't quite catch it. Okay. What part does self-acceptance play in all this? Because he, as he read the discourses, it involved him in much self-beating. And he, he wonders if he has read them in the wrong way. Why did you beat yourself? You see, you're taking, you're taking Baba morally. But you see, you are taking yourself too seriously. You are being over-concerned with your imperfections. And instead of giving your imperfections to Baba and saying quietly, Baba, I'm very imperfect. Help me. What you're doing is, you're going round and round in a circle of yourself, castigating yourself the whole time. So you keep yourself in a state of condemnation of yourself. Go to Baba with your problem. Baba, I am imperfect, and Baba will answer you. Yes, I know you are imperfect. Have patience with that imperfection, 
don't condemn it, understand it, try to control it, and I will help you. This is why I'm against Orthodox Christianity. There are too many rules and regulations, and there's too much of made of sin, too many regulations made. The church doesn't love us if we misbehave ourselves. It gives us moral lessons. But if we go to Baba and tell Baba, Baba says, yes, I know, I know. I know you're imperfect. I, it's very difficult. He says somewhere that everything is as it has to be. We have to go through being imperfect. It's the state of imperfection, the measuring of ourselves against him that makes us love and long to be like him. If we were all perfect, it wouldn't matter. So instead of going around in a circle of condemnation of yourself, condemn yourself once and then give it to Baba. And whatever it is, he will help you with. Does that help you? I don't know. Yes. Yes. Um, when you're surrendering, you're inviting suffering. And what would ha what happens when that suffering becomes so acute that it would drive you into a mental breakdown? When you have met Baba, you have to understand that Baba, when he says he is love, he genuinely is love. And he does not test you or myself or anyone else beyond their capacity. It is our resistances which enlarge our suffering. Way back in 1929, when America had the great financial crisis, how many millionaires committed suicide because of the collapse of the dollar? They took their lives, all because of the dollar. But if you're a barber lover, and I am speaking to barber lovers and not to the mass of people, I speak to you as privileged people. You really should listen to barber when he says, don't worry, be happy. And if you have got a worry, give it to him. Go into your room and tell him what it is. Talk, talk as though he were there before you. You can't see him because you're shut off. There will come a point when occasionally you appeal to him and you will actually see him. But you have to let this grow with you. But as a barber lover, do this, this is what he says. Give it all to me. Whatever you do, he says, don't say, I do this, I do that. Baba does this, Baba does that. He's making it easy for you to. He is not going to take your suffering from you. Read page 310 of The God-Man and all that Baba says about the inexorable must, about karma, we have created it. He is helping us. The treasure he brings is a liberated consciousness. 
and only you by surrenderance to Baba. Nothing to do with God realization, that is far, far. But accepting his words and believing that he is really there to help, and by going to him and speaking to him as though he were another self. You help Baba, you help yourself. You put everything to him. Be angry with Baba. And Baba will understand. He will say, I understand you're being angry. Life is very difficult. I told you that I prayed. Tom said he endured. Why did we have to suffer so many years? Because Tom resisted Baba. I'm sorry, Tom, you don't mind my... Yes. It was Tom's resistance. He would not trust Baba. He would not trust Baba. And Baba had to wait. He couldn't force him. He mustn't. We have been given free will. And we have to decide when we will surrender. And that morning that Baba said to me, now, Dorothy, if today Thomas says to you he is going, let him go. And I thought, well, at least having the position resolved will be a blessing. And I had arrived at the point when I didn't care whether Tom stayed or went. I just wanted an end of the suspense and the uncertainty. But that morning, over breakfast, Tom said, I'm staying. In that moment, he had surrendered. And that doesn't mean, let me repeat it, it isn't God realization. It's accepting Baba and his love. It is the equivalent of accepting the divine Father Mother. We need never be lonely. We need never feel helpless or hopeless. Appeal to Baba. I'm sure it must be becoming the end of ten minutes. Ten minutes. Question here. Adele? That, uh, uh, the Don't Worry, Be Happy uh, had such a universal appeal, <coughs> but I used to feel that with some people who would you know, be attracted to that rather than to this uh, uh, side which requires a little more persistence and all, that when it's said in its full context, it's so beautiful. I don't know that I'm recalling it correctly, but isn't it do your best and be happy in my love? Yes. Something like that. Yes. So that, um, it's what Erich, I recall, was stressing always by saying, it's very important to do your best to exert and then be happy. <laughs> If, if you are working for Baba, if you are doing, if you are doing a sculpture for Baba, Anita, if you are painting a picture for Baba, you automatically do your best, don't you? If I, as a housewife, am running my house, I try to do the best because I have someone to please. First Baba, and then Tom. And I put Baba first, because I know that Baba is in both of us and will keep us. So that by accepting Baba and making Baba the companion, do you understand why in the new life 
Baba made himself the companion. Have any of you asked yourself that? What was he doing? Come on now. You're all intelligent. What was he doing? He was making himself the our companion. Our companion. What was that? Our companion. Our companion. And it is this, the having of this sublime companion, this is the treasure which grows and expands. It creates awareness. It makes you realize that it passes joy, sorrow. But when you have Baba, you have something permanent, not transient. It doesn't pass. It is reality. And that bit of reality, by accepting Baba and trusting in him, it's a question of, now I am repeating myself. I could go on and on. I'm afraid I've ended your sahavas on what may appear a very serious note. Not really. Don't worry. Be happy. <laughs>